Multiculturalism, we're told, is a wonderful thing. A country of many cultures is reportedly a tapestry of wonder, a mosaic of beauty. According to the United Nations, cultural diversity is as necessary for humankind as biodiversity is for nature, the common heritage of humanity. And sure, that all sounds wonderful. We all enjoy the benefits of cross-cultural exchange, the diverse food, music, literature of various different cultures, at least when we're not being accused of cultural appropriation for enjoying those things. But multiculturalism may very well be the downfall of Western civilization itself. There are three main problems with multiculturalism. First, some context. Since the 1960s, Western countries have moved beyond mere appreciation for cultural difference. Political multiculturalists have long suggested that all cultures are equally worthy of respect and inclusion, and the best society is the most diverse society. The best way the world works is everybody in, nobody out. This point of view is disastrous. It's disastrous because not all cultures are morally equivalent. Some cultures, for example, prize truth as a value above others. Other cultures value death over life. Multiculturalism as a philosophy requires a peculiar narcissism found in the West. We tend to think in the West that everyone thinks like us. But as Joseph Henrik, author of The Weirdest People in the World, writes, if you were, quote, raised in a society that is Western, educated, industrialized, rich, and democratic, you're likely rather psychologically peculiar. In other words, not everyone thinks like you. Pretending otherwise is dangerous. For example, if a young Western woman walks through the streets of Mogadishu dressed for a Taylor Swift concert, things are likely to go poorly. And if Britain imports tens of thousands of people from Mogadishu, and that same young Western woman wanders through their neighborhood dressed for a Taylor Swift concert, things are no less likely to go poorly. And yet the peculiar narcissism of the West has led the West to champion multiculturalism for three generations. What's more, because the West has a tendency to believe that all cultures are equivalent, the West has opened its borders wide. After all, you've been told if everyone thinks like we do, the only possible reason to deny mass migration would be, wait for it, racism. So sure, let everyone in and then demand little or no assimilation. As Suella Braverman, Home Secretary in the UK says, quote, there is an optimal level of immigration. It is not zero. But there has been more migration to the UK and Europe in the last 25 years than in all the time that went before. And in the United States, mass migration means that there are somewhere between 11 and 22 million illegal immigrants living in the country. This has resulted in three main problems. The first is breakdown of civic bonds. Every society has baseline propositions to which all members must pledge fealty. In the West, for example, most countries rely on social agreement to the rule of law and equal justice before the law, freedom of speech, freedom of religious practice, respect for private property, among other general principles. Importing large numbers of people who disagree with these propositions results not in a richer and more wonderful life for Western countries, but in societal breakdown. Take, for example, the agreement to rule of law, a belief that justice should be applied evenly, even to members of your own family. But a lot of cultures don't actually believe that. As Henrik writes, quote, we weird people show relatively less favoritism toward our friends, families, co-ethnics, and local communities than other populations do. So it should be no shock that importing people from cultures that act tribally with regards to the rule of law can lead to massive crime problems. As Ayan Hirsi Ali has pointed out, from 2009 to 2021, some three million immigrants have come to Europe, mostly from the Middle East and Africa. Two thirds were male, 80% were under the age of 35. Unsurprisingly, during that same period, sexual coercion has become far more commonplace. In 2017 in Germany, for example, sexual coercion and rape jumped 41%. Between 1997 and 2013, some 1,400 children were sexually abused in Rotherham in England. The media refused to report the story because they believed that doing so would cause a spike in racism. According to Professor Alexis Jay's report on the story, quote, several counselors interviewed believe that by opening up these issues, they could be giving oxygen to racist perspectives that might in turn attract extremist political groups and threaten community cohesion. Just last month, when Israel was victimized by a massive Hamas terrorist assault, London saw a 1,353% increase in anti-Semitic offenses. Overall in France, foreigners accounted for nearly half of those arrested in Paris and 19% in the entire country. We'll get to more on this in just a second. First, I have four kids. As a parent, it's my duty to protect them. These days, it's not as simple as telling them not to take candy from strangers in a van or something. Those strangers are now online. They figured out how to reach kids while they are alone in their rooms. Now, you guys already know, I love ExpressVPN. I use it every day to protect my privacy. I can put ExpressVPN on my kids' devices, but I can't supervise them 24 seven to make sure they have the app on at all times. And that's why I switched to AirCove by ExpressVPN. 
Erica puts ExpressVPN's top-rated protection on my home Wi-Fi directly. So now, I don't need to worry about whether we have the app turned on or if we even have it installed on all our devices. It's not just a VPN router. Erico gives my whole family advanced protection features. It prevents my kids from accessing adult sites. It blocks ads. It protects my family from malicious trackers on the internet. I can even set up device groups and create my own rules for each member of my family. There's only a limited number of Aircoves available, but thanks to the partnership we have with ExpressVPN, my viewers can get one in their hands right now. Get a free 30-day trial of ExpressVPN with your Aircove purchase. Go to expressvpn.com slash benaircove to learn more. That's expressvpn.com slash benaircove. Again, expressvpn.com slash benaircove. Advocates of multiculturalism seek to ignore the ugly side of mass migration, hiding statistics or eliding them entirely. Many European countries refuse to break down criminality by ethnicity or religion. And this creates pushback from right-wing groups who seek immigration restrictions. The social compact begins to fray. The second problem with multiculturalism and its effects is taxation of public resources. In a non-welfare state, mass migration and multiculturalism might be possible, mainly because the institutions of the economy immediately assimilate people who come to a new country. This assimilation can be bolstered by societal pressures or government assistance, as was the case in America in the early 20th century. But in a vast welfare state, immigration simply cannot be open. In 2014, the anti-illegal immigration group Federation for American Immigration Reform estimated social and government services to illegal aliens cost the state of California $25.3 billion per year. According to the Center for Immigration Studies, nearly half of all households headed by legal immigrants used at least one welfare program in 2012, compared with 30% of native-headed households. That imbalance is particularly stark with regards to food programs, 36% to 22%, and Medicaid, 39% to 23%. The third problem with multiculturalism is the broadening of the so-called Overton window. Cultures bring their values with them, as we've talked about earlier. Those values may, and in many cases do in fact, run absolutely counter to the values of the host society. It's not just that radical Muslim migration into Europe brings with it an attendant increase in terrorism, though it does, it's that large new constituencies hold radical views sometimes. A poll in February 2015 found widespread sympathy for radical views among British Muslims. 27% said they had some sympathy for the motives behind the terrorist attack on French satire magazine Charlie Hebdo. According to a 2023 poll from Signal, 58% of American Muslims said that Hamas was justified in attacking Israel after Hamas's genocidal attack on Israeli civilians on October 7th, 2023. Diversity can, in fact, be a strength, but only when that diversity serves a common purpose and a societal goal. Robert Putnam, author of the book Bowling Alone, is a leftist who once believed in the mantra, diversity is our strength. Then he started doing experiments regarding communities. What he saw was that diversity in communities didn't lead to better, more cohesive, more tolerant communities. Putnam concluded the only way to leave our doors unlocked at night and to trust each other to babysit our kids comes from shared values. The West must rediscover its shared values and stand in pursuit of them or allow itself to be torn apart from the inside. 